Hi folks, I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Uh, I'm a big fan of Robin Ford and it's not often I actually learn someone else's guitar solo note for note these days. I tend to prefer to do my own thing. If I'm doing a cover, I'll do improvisation over it or whatever. Uh, but I've made an exception here. I actually wanted to learn his solo from this track. Now the track in question is Revelation from the album Talk to Your Daughter. Uh, it was written by Russell Ferrante, the keyboard player. Um, but Robin's solo in the middle of this is just magnificent. I'm, I'm going to talk a bit more about it in a moment. First of all, I should say I'm going to put a timestamp below. If you just want to skip to me playing the track, then uh, you can check that out and just skip all this. But I'm going to waffle on a little bit about the gear I'm using first and then some of the elements of the solo that I really find inspiring. Okay, let's do the gear thing first. Uh, I'm using my Sire H7, which I love more and more. The more I play this thing, the more I enjoy it. Um, it's obviously not what Robin Ford used on the original recording, but I think he probably used his signature Fender guitar at the time, which had humbuckers. The thing he's pictured with it on the front cover of the album, I assume that's what he probably used. So at least we're in humbucker territory. Uh, I'm just Going to use the bridge humbucker the whole way through for a nice, quacky, bright tone. Um, he's obviously no stranger to semi hollow guitars as well, of course, and also no stranger to Larry Carlton. So, hopefully, Robin would approve of my use of this guitar for a cover of one of his tracks. Uh, and then, if you've seen any of my other videos, you probably would expect to see an amp on this table behind me. Uh, I'm actually not using an amp this time, I'm recording direct into my interface and into my computer. I recently bought the Line 6 Helix Native plugin, which is all of the amp models and the effects from a Helix, but in the format of a plugin on your computer. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun, I'm, get, I'm just getting to grips with the plugin, so I thought it'd be fun to try and find some tones that sound a little bit like what Robin Ford was using on this track. So I'll just go through what I'm using in the chain here. The first thing is the Diana Drive. Uh, which is the Zen Drive model. I know that Robin Ford uses that on his board or used to use it. Obviously, probably not at the time of this recording, but at least we're in that kind of overdrive territory, it seemed appropriate. And then, of course, the amp is the model of the Dumbo, which is called the Line 6 Litigator. I've got the drive down pretty low, 2.2. Uh, I've got the mids right up um, and the presence up and also the master up. And that's just going into two by 12 interstate cab with a ribbon mic. Uh, and then uh, the first bit of reverb is a room reverb called Dynamic Ambience on the 10 meter room size. Uh, I've seen interviews with Robin before where he talks about his Dumble amp and how it kind of needs a, a certain size of room to really, the sound to develop. It doesn't work kind of really close mic'd in a small room. It has to be, in a room that has a little bit of ambience. So that seemed like an appropriate effect then to put straight after that. Uh, and then a little bit of delay, simple delay, um, not very much at all, just adding a tiny bit of kind of extra ambience. Uh, and then a bit of dynamic plate reverb as well. And then into a bit of graphic EQ and compressor, the LA Studio compressor, uh, which, just to squish some of those peaks a little bit, not to crush the dynamics, because it's nice to have the dynamic. Um, what else? That then goes into, I should say, it's not entirely line six here, and um, then going into the uh, Waves Abbey Road plugins that I've talked about in previous videos. I did a Beatles cover recently using these. I'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, so that's the console, the red console, uh, which emulates the sound of the console in Abbey Road, and then the J37 tape machine plugin. So I tend to use those on almost everything at the moment. Uh, just adds a lovely bit of analog warmth and kind of grit at the same time. Uh, it doesn't fundamentally change the tone that I've dialed in in the Line 6 plugin. It's just adding that slight extra kind of vintage tone to it, which I really like. So that is how I'm getting the sound. So as I mentioned, I don't often learn solos note for note these days, but I think it is a really worthwhile thing to do. Uh, you come away with some new ideas, some new licks, 
and a greater understanding of how the solo works and how it flows and what the note choices were. So I wanted to do just a little bit of a breakdown and highlight some of the things that I've enjoyed kind of experiencing in this solo. Let's have a little listen to it, right? The first thing that struck me was just the use of space. Right, there are moments where he plays very fast, but he's phrasing it like a singer would, or like a sax player would. You know, it's that phrases, actual musical phrases with gaps before the next phrase comes in. And it's just so much more coherent and nice to listen to. I think we as guitarists can often forget that because there's nothing to stop us just playing a barrage of notes through an entire solo. Uh, so that is something that I've taken away from this that I want to incorporate more in my own playing. Uh, another thing there, he, he, right the way through the solo, he's really mixing the major pentatonic, G, key of G, so he's mixing the G major pentatonic and the G minor pentatonic, so you've got things like... <laughs> So that's all G major. And there's that minor. So it really flits back and forth between those two different tonalities yeah, in, in the time honored sort of blues fashion. Uh, and then a little bit of kind of chromatic outside stuff creeps in as well. Let's have a listen to a bit more. There's the first little sign of something a bit beyond the kind of standard blues vocabulary. That's cool, that's cool. Bends. I love that full um, sort of three semitones. That's so great. So that's hitting the fifth degree of the scale, the D, up to an F, up to the seventh degree of the scale, and then putting in the, the root note above the G at the same time for that clash. Beautiful. Definitely stealing that lick, that's insane. Starts with this kind of like an augmented triad. And then sort of G mixolydian in thirds. And then fourth. And then back to the sort of minor pentatonic. Beautiful stuff. another amazing kind of chromatics lick. Going down to the E minor course, it's basically over the B7 to an E minor. Just sort of the, that's sort of the diminished scale. There's something right, so a, a lot of the rhythms of the faster runs are in triplets, so quaver triplets, so one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
But sometimes like that run there, he switches to semi-quaver, so that's groups of four instead of groups of three. So it's kind of almost going against the triplet feel of the, the track itself. Very straight. Uh, and that's such a cool kind of contrast that using that contrasting two different kind of approaches to the rhythm. Uh, and that's, again, that's something I'm taking away from this. I want to incorp incorporate more in my own playing is varying the rhythm uh, and thinking about the groupings. <laughs> Wanna solo? So it's been huge, huge fun uh, learning it, um, and huge, huge fun recording it. When I was recording it, uh, my Fitbit that records my health uh, thought I was on a bike ride. So I don't know. I must have been moving around an awful lot. Uh, so there you go, burning the calories playing the guitar. Anyway, that's enough waffling on. I'll. Uh, just leave you to hopefully enjoy my rendition of Revelation. Here it goes. Remember, like and subscribe and all of that stuff. See you next time.